nine, almost 10 years of doing the ketogenic diet for this guy as of 2019. I lost 100 pounds utilizing the ketogenic diet. And the reason that I even tout that is simply because I think I'm a pretty good candidate to explain the side effects. I've experienced them. I've been through the side effects. And there are even some side effects after nine, 10 years of keto that I still experience, but I also know how to combat them. So in this video, I'm gonna give you what I think are the eight most common keto side effects. And I'll give you some little solutions for them too so you can get through it and not have it set you back so you can get on with your weight loss goals and not ever have a hiccup. Hey, we've got new videos all the time, okay? Almost every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, so please hit that little red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. Now, without further ado, let's jump right in. The first one, and one that a lot of people deal with, is simple, good old fatigue. Okay, here's what more than likely is going on at the core of this whole fatigue issue with the ketogenic diet. Okay, first things first, when you're on a ketogenic diet, you lose water. Okay, the kidneys expel more water because insulin levels are low. It's very simple. So just take my word on that. You lose extracellular water, right? So what happens is with that water loss, you lose minerals and you lose particularly magnesium. Here's the thing. When we create energy in the body, we need something known as ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, this is the building block. This is energy at its core. ATP, in order to become activated and used by the body, has to bind to magnesium. Do the math. If we lost our magnesium because we are low in water and we're losing our water, right? Then we don't have the magnesium to bind to the ATP. So we don't have as much energy. Simple solution is make sure you're getting magnesium in, whether it's gonna be through veggies, and if you don't eat veggies, supplement some magnesium. I don't even care which kind, just don't drink Epsom salt water, okay? Because then you're gonna be running to the bathroom. So that's thing number one. Let's just get that out of the way. The second one is you sort of lost your strength in the gym. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're male, female, weightlifter, runner, whatever, you feel like you kind of lost that extra edge. And this doesn't really have to do with fatigue, this is more just about strength, right? And kind of just that, that push. Well, a lot of it comes down to the fact that you have lower levels of glycogen. Okay, so this is simple. I'm oversimplifying this. Okay, some of the devout keto people will tell me that this is uh, too simplified, but I want to make it easy. Okay, we lose our muscle glycogen and we also lose our liver glycogen. These are stored carbohydrates that are in our muscles and our liver. What that means is that our body doesn't have the glycolytic pathway to create energy from our stored carbohydrates as quickly. Once you get adapted to keto, your body learns how to restore glycogen through other means, okay? Through some protein breakdown, through some fibers, things like that. It can actually store glycogen in more efficient ways. So my point in saying this is it's usually a temporary thing, okay, but you will lose some strength. You know, we're talking maybe five to 10%. But that's really not a big deal when you factor in all the other positive effects that you get. The other thing you have to look at is keto makes the blood slightly more acidic, which means that it could inhibit ATP getting broken down into ADP for energy. For those of you that are science nerds out there, you know what that means. But basically, you might lose a little bit of strength, but it's usually short term and ultimately doesn't really mean anything. Okay, the third thing we have to talk about is headaches. How many of you that are doing a low carb diet or started a low carb diet are getting headaches? Okay, I got them a lot when I first started out. And the big thing, again, it circles right back to dehydration, ladies and gentlemen, it's simple, it really is. We're losing that water, we're not replenishing our sodium, we're not replenishing our minerals. So what's happening is the blood vessels in our brain are constricting and it's starving our brain of oxygen. So you're actually losing all the benefit that you would be getting from the keto diet in terms of improved cognitive function simply because you're dehydrated and you're not delivering oxygen in the first place. So hydrate up, get that sodium in, because here's what's interesting. There's a study that was published in the journal Headache and Pain. It took a look at 52 participants. They divided them into a keto group and a standard group in terms of their diet. And they found that the keto group ended up having 90% less instances of headaches than the standard diet group. Well, what, why, why would we be getting headaches then if we're seeing the keto group actually have improvements? Well, because in a clinical setting, they were putting them on keto and they were making sure they were hydrated. My point is that your keto diet is great for your headaches. It's great for your migraines. In fact, it can blunt them in the first place. You just have to make sure you're hydrated. So long-term, chronically, it's gonna help your migraines. All right, now we have to talk about a big one, the skin. Okay, you go on a keto diet and all of a sudden, like you feel like your skin is dry and you feel like you're getting wrinkles. It's the opposite of what you've been told should happen, right? Okay, it's like you go on keto, you're thinking you're eating all this fat and oil, your skin's gonna be glistening and smooth and perfect, but it's doing just the opposite. You're getting wrinkly, you're getting crow's feet. What is going on? Okay, it has to do with collagen. Okay, here's what's happening. With collagen, it draws a lot of water in. So once again, hey, surprise, surprise, when we're dehydrated, the collagen 
doesn't absorb as much water because the water has to go to other areas that are more important, that are vital. So the collagen is the first to kind of take on the brunt, right? It doesn't get the water, which means that the strands in the collagen start to crack and then they kind of adhere together and they break, which exactly causes wrinkles, right? It's the breakage. That's why it's so hard to fix wrinkles. What's interesting is that studies have shown in a particular study in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences that adding collagen peptides allows water to go into the collagen more because it's actually fixing up this whole situation. So basically, UVB, UVA damage ends up getting somewhat reversed by having collagen. Well, this is obviously with UVA, UVB, but it still has the same effect. Like when you're getting wrinkles from sun damage, it's the same as getting wrinkles just because your skin's dried out in a lot of ways. So we can fix this with collagen peptides because it's gonna allow the water to go to the right place. So more collagen means more opportunities for the water to draw in. Now, this study proved that it had to do with the mRNA, basically gene expression, of what is called hyaluronic acid synthase. Hyaluronic acid, if you know of like beauty products, draws in a lot of water. It's something crazy, like one gram of hyaluronic acid can hold like a liter of water or, or six liters of water. It's like something crazy like that. I don't know right offhand. But basically, if we can improve hyaluronic acid synthase, we get more hyaluronic acid, which can draw more water and fill in our wrinkles and make our skin look smoother. So get your collagen in. Which by the way, if you're watching this video, down in the description, there is a link for some really cool single serve packets of collagen from a company called Perfect Keto. So these guys make some really delicious collagen. So my wife puts it in her yogurt, she makes a shake with it, she does all kinds of things with it, and she's someone that's really concerned with her skin. I consume it because it's good for my joints and it just helps me feel good and I feel like I get a mental boost from it. So there's kind of a female application and a male application, but the stuff is awesome and it's super tasty and super convenient with the single serve packs. So the best part is special discount if you're watching this video. They are a sponsor of this channel. They help me out a ton and they help you out as well. So do yourself a favor, check them out down below in the description after we wrap up this video. Now we move into the next thing, constipation hey, wouldn't it be crazy if this had to do with dehydration too? Okay, constipation is usually a result of water not being in the colon. Now, when we are dehydrated, water that normally goes into the colon actually gets resorbed back into the body. So normally when we're adequately hydrated, we have water and sodium ions that flood water into the colon, soften up the stool, we go to the bathroom, no problem. But on keto, of course, yeah, if you're dehydrated, you're running into an issue. So all of this is kind of a general consensus. We need to be adding salt, we need to be adding water so that we are hydrated. Granted, once you're on the keto diet for a little bit longer, you don't need to hydrate as much. Your body adapts a little bit more. Okay, now let's move into keto breath. Okay, this is a big one. People don't wanna do the keto diet because they think their breath is gonna be bad. It's a true legitimate side effect, okay? But what it is, is a result of excess acetone. Okay, you have three ketone bodies, beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate and acetone. Acetone sounds terrible, but it's not. It's a naturally occurring thing in your body and it's no big deal. Basically, it is a byproduct of acetoacetate breaking down. So you have one particular ketone that breaks down and it creates acetone as somewhat of a byproduct and then you uh, basically evacuate it through your breath. As your body gets more efficient at utilizing ketones, you have less and less excess. When you first start keto, you have a bunch of excess ketones because your body's like, what do I do with this? Your cells don't know how to use it yet. But then once you're in keto for a while, your cells know how to use it. They've become sort of indoctrinated into this fat utilization mode. So that means there's no more excess ketones, just adequate amounts, which means you don't have excess that's coming out through your breath. So my only advice there is stay true to it. It will go away and you can use breath mints, whatever. Just make sure that they obviously don't have sugar in them. Now I wanna talk about muscle and joint stiffness. A lot of people start keto and they end up feeling like their joints are stiff. This is a simple one. It, generally speaking, is inflammation triggered by too much in the way of omega-6s. I sound like a broken record for you that know my channel. I talk about this all the time. What happens when you start a keto diet? You start eating a bunch of bacon, a bunch of eggs, a bunch of high fat foods, but you're not spending the money on the good omega-3s. You're not getting a good omega-3 supplement, you're not eating as much salmon, and your ratio is worse because the amount of fat you're consuming is, is hard to match with an omega-3. It's always a balance of how much fats we have in the way of omega-6s and omega-3s, okay? So if we eat more fats, it means we have to eat more omega-3s to make sure that we're level because we don't want too much omega-6. It triggers inflammation, okay? Prostaglandins, all this stuff that's gonna cause you to feel achy and stiff and cause inflammation in your body. Eat a lot more fish, sardines, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, whatever. Even if you wanna have some oysters and you wanna go down that road, go down that road, or take a good quality DHA or fish oil supplement, not some cheap kind of one that you're gonna find at the typical store. Get a good one online. Okay, lastly, we have to talk about the keto rash. 
Keto rash is somewhat rare. Only a few percent of people that do keto get it, but it is worth mentioning. Okay, it is where you just couldn't get an itchy red rash. It's not super big or super crazy, it's just annoying. And usually it's a result of what is called neutrophil infiltration. So what happens is ketones tend to clog up around a specific area when you first start keto, and they trigger sort of some uh, site-specific inflammation. The site-specific inflammation causes white blood cells to do an interesting thing that manifests through what's called neutrophil infiltration, and you get a little rash. As your body adapts to ketones, you will get better. The other theory behind the keto rash is a gut dysbiosis. And this, again, is something that's just at the beginning. When you first start a keto diet, you're flipping your gut biome on its head. It's like, whoa, I'm used to consuming this, and my gut bacteria is used to this, and all of a sudden you've just changed it. You're having a gut dysbiosis, and it's causing sort of a microbial response within your body that's manifesting through a rash. All these things go away. If you stick true and you don't eat a crazy weird variety of different keto foods for a couple weeks, you just keep it clean, your gut will settle down and the rash will go away. Okay, I hope that this helped you out and I hope that I gave you some interesting tips that you could take away and I hope they gave you, honestly, something that you can literally take away by checking out Perfect Keto too so you can have something tasty out of this too. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here in my videos. If you have any ideas for further videos, put them down in the comment section below and I'll see y'all soon.